I think it's fair to say that extract campers are universally hated across the Tarkov community, especially on Reddit, but Reddit has complained about all sorts of shit. For the uninitiated, an extract camper is someone who camps at one of the only ways to leave the raid for unsuspecting players to kill. It's not difficult to understand why they would be so disliked. While you're breaking through blood, sweat and tears, putting in the best job you can muster, they're lying back, taking it easy and waiting for the climactic finish. And yes, you guessed it, similar to having sex with women. At least I think so, that's what my replica tells me. I'm kind of undecided myself on what I think about it. On one hand, I think it's inevitable by design, and in some ways it can improve the game. And on the other one that's no longer attached to my body, I think it should be a bannable offence. I know there's a few people out there who are already trying to get me sedated just for insinuating that extra campus could bring any value to this silly game, so I thought I wouldn't explain that until the end, just to make you a little bit more mad. As someone whose main method of playing Tarkov is sprinting to the most volatile area and shooting everything that moves, extra camping is always an alien to me, and I figured if we were going to talk about this, we should experience it for ourselves. The main criteria I wanted to meet was at least 20 extract kills, 2 mil worth of loot, and most importantly of all, at least a few death threats. To help with this, I included my YouTube account in my name, as there's nothing more humiliating than getting killed by someone who's trying to be a YouTuber. So let's get to work. The first thing I wanted to do was see how people currently optimize their extract camping. Activating NordVPN, not a sponsor, I just didn't want anyone to know I was looking at these videos, I loaded up the first one. Meet Betablade, or as he goes by, the clown. I feel like even if you hate extract camping, it's hard not to find the flagrancy of the whole thing amusing. It's got such a fuck you, I don't care vibe to it that I frankly just find admirable. Embracing the memes to their truest extent, mixed with a blatant disregard for any integrity, this channel single-handedly prepared me for my first expedition. Loading up my MPX, it was time to go to the shops. Well that went about as well as expected, but the spirits were high and channeling the energy of a parking enforcer I knew I still had some days to ruin. It was a bit touch and go, but we've actually made it, boys, and now we can begin our... Okay, yeah, fair enough. Loading in again, third time's a charm. Spawning in railway, we still have the free raid entertainment going, and little did I know until reviewing this clip, the Swamp Man himself might have been trying to warn me of something. Okay, let's make our way back over to Edgeville. I don't need all of them. Look at all the coins on the ground. Would not be surprised if there's someone waiting. Okay, <laughs> we're good, we're good. Okay, actually, I just realized I made a mistake. I how much does this cake sell for to the shop? 20 coins, new moneymaker discovered. At this point, I was considering dropping the video altogether and joining a radical cult, but I had committed to a goal and I wouldn't give up so easily. Loading up again and being dangerously low on funds, we had to make something work. Getting a nice railway spawn, we finally made it to our destination, and now all we had to do is wait and wait, and then wait. God, there was so much waiting, but all of that waiting might just be about to pay off as we had our first customer, and he just didn't stand a chance. Those rip bullets shredded his legs like cheese, delicious loot filled cheese. Similar to buying clothes on Sheen, I had mixed feelings about the first time. It doesn't seem morally right, but boy, can you get stuff for cheap. After following the basic code, I went to check what our first FedEx drop off was. Not a bad haul for our first kill, and oh boy, I'm so sorry you lost that flash drive because I don't even need it. I don't do quests. Contemplating what else I could be capable of if I'm able to do this, like my emotions, I pushed them down and made my way out. After making our way underground, we only had 9 minutes left, and a move that's going to demonstrate quite quickly why I'm so poor, I decided to try and loot more from the mall, and after immediately meeting a scav, also thought it was a good idea to fight him at medium range of a weapon that's only function is to mark your grave. At 
this point is really not looking good, I've got to be honest. Selling basically everything in my stash and literally 9k left in my name. I really need to do something here. A closed railway spawn set me up perfectly. There's no way I could fuck this up. With one kill in the bank, maybe luck was changing. Reflecting on our last raid, I began to see the appeal of extract camping. Sure, most of the time the fight is incredibly one-sided, but when you hear those footsteps after waiting for so long, you get that rush of adrenaline all the same. While you're on standby, it frees up time for you to focus on the other things, like catching up with the latest Seth video, writing this exact sentence, or watching your favourite show. Waiting for a bit longer, it looks like this raid is a bust, and I head to the extract. Not without a little care package, though. I'll use this money to fund the raids, but I won't be counting it towards the 2 mil, as I'm only counting gear from players at the extract. As it stands, we have a lot of work to do, so let's not waste any time. So here's our first issue. I cannot for the life of me stop disconnecting, and when you disconnect while you're lying under anything, like getting the Christian girl pregnant, you're now trapped forever. This was an issue not only for the leave percentage, but also because all of the best spots revolve around lying under things. This will require some thought. Spawning Railway, we started to test some spots out when I saw this. Could we get in there? Would that work? Yeah, you can get in there, and no, it does not work. Exactly as before, you're trapped forever. I decided on just lying close to the tracks and hoping no one would notice me, and for Emicon I thought maybe I could go for Guardian Angel, so I loaded up a big rifle and hopped in, and that's when I saw this. Can you get in there? You can. Will this work? There's only one way to find out. I realized a few things around here. One, dying was no longer an issue. I had this protective shield. How could you get mad at someone killing you when you're doing the most toxic thing in the game? Each time I was killed, it just felt like the world was working as it should be, and it made me understand Hinduism just a little bit more. 
The second was my care for the victims. I realised that this was different depending on who I killed. This was decided by the level of the player. For some reason I had the preconception that the higher level players deserved it more than the lowers, something I didn't want to dig into too much as I was scared of where it would lead. Oh. Exit located. <laughs> That's just brutal, isn't it? You listen. Так, пора сваливать. Все, пацаны, валим. Graphics card. At this point, you might be wondering why the kill counter is full, and yet the money earned stays at zero. The thing is, as many kills as we were getting, we just weren't making it out. Some of this was due to greediness, sticking around longer than I should, some of it was just bad luck. And some of it was because I'm incapable of aiming. I made it a few times, but it didn't seem right to include that to the total as I was spending so much on gear. So if the kills met, the death threats met, I just needed the money and we were done. My current total stash amount equals to about 20k, when this is above 2 mil, we know we've met the goal. I found a lot of the time I was running into teams, and most of the time I wasn't really equipped for that, so I brought in the most autistic person I know to help with some of the raids in the last leg of the challenge. If one scumbag can be this OP, what can you do with two? There's someone coming. Yeah, to our left. Should I blast him? He didn't stand a chance, did he? No. It's kind of sad, wasn't it, really? <laughs> he was just jumping and shit. Yeah, I know. He doesn't look like he's got much. He's just brought us one of these tiny little backpacks. How fucking... How unfair. What well, is he? Fucking poor or something, dude. Yeah, Jesus. Get, get your fucking act together, man. <laughs> Maybe get out of the raid for once instead of sleeping at the extract. <laughs> the fuck, dude? After experimenting with a few different methods, we optimised our runs to the fullest extent. Emicon was sorted. Right. One in the truck, one below. When one fires underneath, the one in the truck can peek, and then there's just no chance. Yep, I saw him. Is he extra dude? He's literally shooting at me. Jump, kill him. Dead. For railway, similar to Lee, you either pick top or bot lane, and then hope they don't five-man air emit down mid. Finding this evil spot on the right side, it's safe to say that this extract is pretty well protected. Oh, just there. Ready? Yeah. Oh, on the right, on the right of me. Heavily packed. Dead, dead, dead. Oh, there's a dude, there's a dude. I'm eating chicken. Dead. He went up the top. Left. Left. Are we cunts, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. We decided who would get the loot in the most honourable way we could think of. As you've probably already guessed, this was duck races. Sometimes actually being more intense than the raid itself. Oh my seconds. god, you're going off the screen! Oh, come, oh on. My god, are you come on! Come on! There's yes. no way, yes. dude. Oh. <laughs> There's no way. And you know Lee it, is... dude. Loot's mine. Loot's mine. I'm taking your fucking pilgrim. Yeah. Okay. Hey, out. What? What? What's going on? Who's that? Who's that? What? Right there. Oh, I thought that was you, man. <laughs> Me.
You got him. You got him. Just a scab. He's gonna have nothing good. Ooh! <laughs> That's pretty good, dude. Yep, done. Uh, currently, I'm rocking rangefinder in one hand, <laughs> compass, in, <laughs> compass in the other one. So if someone comes, it might get a bit sketchy. Do you know what I mean? When you start learning the numbers, dude, 180. That'd actually be really helpful when you're in a fight. You'd have to get your compass out, I suppose. It's not that helpful. <laughs> There's another one. There's another one. Could you boost me up? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you. Dead, dead. Uh... Oh, dude. And we did it, boys. We officially have the street cred of a registered sex offender. Round of applause, please. So, what do we make of the old ordeal? What, what do we learn, hey? The first thing I realized is that extract camping is basically the video game equivalent of fishing. You wait for hours for this one window of opportunity to get your prey. If you miss it, you've now got to wait for the next sorry stuff to come along. And if you get it, you're just left feeling a little bit sad at how unfair the battle was. It was a lot more enjoyable than I was expecting, if I'm honest. I think a lot of people have a hard time understanding that, but that's just because they're usually the ones dying. I mean, you just sit here, most of the time tapped out doing something else, and then when you hear steps, you come and see what the two fairies brought you this year. Nice. The extra element of mystery loot adds to the enjoyment. You know, you can search crates for your whole life, but you know mostly what you're going to find in there. Someone who's desperately trying to get to the extract, however, that's another thing. They could have anything on them, and oh boy do you want to find out. I felt like it wasn't even really about getting out of the loot, which for the most part worked in my favour because I barely did. It was just the excitement of getting the kill, and then finding out what they had. It got to the point where extra camping took the place of the background video. You know, that extra bit of stimulus you need to keep all the dark thoughts at bay. I'd start working on something, or start editing, and think, man, if I'm at my PC, why don't I just get down to the extract? Might get some loot, and I'm capitalising on this time. It started to feel like not extract camping was XP wasting, so I thought maybe it was time to go cold turkey for a bit. You never want to get too dependent on the most toxic thing in the world. I think players get frustrated at people who extract camp for a number of pretty justifiable reasons, and maybe some unjustifiable ones. I think the main one given is that it gives players an unfair advantage on others, which if you really examine it boils down to, it gives players an unfair advantage on me, because they're not bothered when they get this advantage in the form of having all of the best gear in the game because they have no social life. The problem I'm trying to highlight is that Tarkov is a game created around unfair advantages. They'll never be eliminated and they form the foundation of the game. When you hear someone in the same building as you and your reaction is to stay still and wait for them to pass your room, guess what? You've got an unfair advantage on that guy. You could make yourself known, make it a fair fight, but you're not going to do that because Tarkov's not a game about fair fights. Tarkov is a game about surviving any way you can, even if it means committing some horrible acts. Hell, having someone to play this game with gives you an advantage both mentally and physically over like 95% of the player base. Obviously, any discussion around trying to ban it is not worth entertaining because I mean just think about it for more than 10 seconds and honestly I think it adds a bit of extra suspense to extracting that is much needed. I know, I know, I know. He said something I don't like about the game that I play, what will I do now? But listen, okay, I'm gonna black pill you right now. Most of the time people die when they come to the extract is because they act like nobody's there. I'm not saying if you always prepare you're going to win every fight, but I am saying if you stop sprinting directly into the extract, lying prone in front of the barrel of my gun, you might actually have a chance. Listen, I was like you before, not giving a single thought about extract campers because it was so rare it would happen, but now I've started doing it, I've realised how vulnerable these guys are if you're expecting them to be there. Spending the extra few minutes scoping the area and playing it more cautiously as I approached gave it that extra bit of suspense which underpins all of Tarkov. And really, you think the only way out should have the highest level of stake, right? Like out of everything. It should be the one of the hottest points. Do you really want a situation where you never have to worry about getting killed when you're extracting? Doesn't that just take some of the high intensity gameplay away from a game that's all about being intense? One way or another, there's a million ways to gain an advantage on another player in Tarkov. Extra camping is just another one of them. Granted, it may be the most egregious, and I'm definitely not trying to argue that it's not a scummy thing to do. I'll admit that wholeheartedly, but I am trying to argue that it's fucking funny. From disconnects, my PC deciding to delete random videos, Premiere Pro shitting itself every 5 minutes, and my internet cutting out all the fucking time, this video really took its toll on me, and if you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate you, and maybe if you're feeling a little bit generous, you could, I don't know, like fucking like the video, you virgin.